Okay. Uh, last two weeks ago, we looked at uh, the destruction of the religious uh, leaders there. Remember, the religious is built up on the political. We looked at the religious, how God destroyed the religious last week. This week, we'll look at how God destroys the political Babylon. And so, uh, it's starting to get into a couple areas. Uh, let me see. Probably uh, beginning next week, we start chapter 19. Uh, we'll get in some really exciting stuff, I think, anyway. So, uh, thank you for being faithful, and I hope it's worth it. Okay, as Antichrist military machine marches toward Israel, Armageddon, God remembers Babylon. He judges her to fall in one day, and all that is left are B-I-R, birds and demons. <laughs> huh? Well, you can call them devils, but they're evil spirits. That's just, I wouldn't look at him too deep. At least that's what I've always thought. Yeah. <laughs> well, he hadn't been married as long as we had, but I've. <laughs> I'm not looking her way. <laughs> But anyway, birds and demons. <laughs> and uh, so we start tonight. For all nations have drunk of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. And the kings of the earth have committed fornication with her. And the merchants of the earth are waxed rich through the abundance of her delicacies. Business people of the world are so involved in Babylon's financial market and economy because she is the leader she is the leader of the one world banking and one world trade system, like America with the Federal Reserve and Wall Street, at least it used to be. Babylon's international corporate leaders, CEOs, wealthy barons, and sheiks are involved with Babylon's LUX luxury, money, and wealth. If you want to see wealth, look at Dubai. Just look at that. I mean, out of nothing. They built that. They didn't even have enough ground. They brought the sand in and the ground, and, and that's how they built the, those tall buildings that everybody wants to go to now, luxury and everything. So it's, it's real interesting. Then, uh, let me see here. Uh, most of the world's capital will flow from Antichrist headquarters in Babylon. Babylon's magnificence will attract most and the ones not having his mark will not be able to buy, sell, or trade. With shortages, famines, difficulties to just survive, you can imagine what the business merchants will take advantage of to remain in their luxury. You think they try to take advantage of people? If not, I mentioned Pfizer, I mentioned Moderna, <laughs> uh, I mentioned high tech, and uh, did you see we bought Israel spyware? That's going to be interesting. That's where they can trace you, watch you, do everything you've ever, you ever thought never could ever happen. They'll know exactly who you are, where you are, and what you're doing. And they said, oh, we would never use it for that. Yeah. Do you believe your government? And that's something. It's unbelievable. This is a time when the center of the world finance and commerce will move its basis from New York and Geneva with the headquarters in Shinar, S-H-I, Shinar, which is in the area there of Babylon. Okay? Notice, uh, well, let me help you. Yeah. You said you had no idea. I said, let me help you, okay? <laughs> Notice where it's underlined. Just where it's underlined, Zechariah. Whether do these bear the ephah, if that's how you say that, to build it and house in the land of, where? 
Shinar, and it shall be established and set there upon her own base. And it's talking about Babylon itself. Verse 4. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people. Come out of Babylon, you Jews, that you be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. Get out before it's too late. Sort of sounds like the rapture, doesn't it? He said, I'm going to take you out before it hits. So he's telling his own people, you need to get out of here right away because judgment is coming to where you're living right now, in Babylon or the area there. And so he's giving them an opportunity. Number one, there will be a number of Jewish people who end up in Babylon. And I was thinking about it, especially bankers and diamond people. <laughs> That's what they're terrific at. High tech too. But especially, you know, Israel, they have no diamonds in the land. And she's one of the number one diamond cutters in the world. And people from all over the world take Israel, their diamonds, so that she can cut them. Yeah, that's an interesting story. Okay, uh, they might even be taken there because of their TAL talents, like scientists. It was a Jewish scientist who helped with the rockets to be able to also do the atomic bomb. <laughs> and uh, they're just brilliant. God has actually blessed them in so many ways. Uh, every now and then we look up Israel's uh, uh, science, let me see, scientific discoveries. Just pull that up sometime and just see what Israel's doing right now. That's unbelievable. I just saw where uh, the one airplane uh, has a little dill bubble underneath it and it moves around like that like a what do you call it a turret turret what okay turret and uh, it shoots lasers just shoots lasers like crazy destroy things it's amazing what they're doing they're great with marijuana by the way I just thought I'd mention that they, they put people in tents and they inhale marijuana and it helps heal some uh, physical conditions. Uh, they're way ahead on that. Uh, they're just tremendous. Jeweler or counterfeiter. Remember World War II? Uh, they had all the, those people that could make my, uh, counterfeit money uh, for the Germans. And uh, interesting. Daniel and the three Hebrews, boys, that's where they went. Two, it could be that some of the Jewish people might migrate there, B.E., before the Antichrist rise. Maybe as merchants, they will see the opportunity for financial gain or even food. Many or most other cities will have been destroyed at this time. Here God will cast out his people, or I'm sorry, call out his people, giving them an opportunity to flee Babylon. They could go to Jerusalem, which will still be standing. Remember the big earthquake that leveled uh, the mountains and the islands disappeared <laughs> and everything like that? Not too many places go to. Okay? M Micah, just where it's underlined, and thou shalt go even to Babylon, and th shalt thou be delivered. There the Lord shall redeem thee from the hand of thine enemies. So there'll be a lot of Jews there. Verse 5. For her sins have reached unto heaven, and God hath remembered her iniquities. God reveals why he is judging the city of Babylon. He has not forgotten all her idolatry, and abominations beginning at B.A.B. Babel. That's in Genesis 10 and 11. We looked at that some, uh, where the religions began at the Tower of Babel and so on. Okay? Uh, <clears throat> remember, this implies Babylon's sins have been accumulating, being S.T.O.R. stored up, not ever forgotten. And here they all will be judged. <laughs> God sees everything. Sometimes, I think it's Psalm 73, 
We say, why do the wicked prosper? And then finally, I think it's David, at the end of it, he said, then I saw their end. And he didn't complain anymore about it. And this is their end. Okay? Verse 6. Reward her even as she rewarded you, and double unto her double according to her works, in the cup which she shall fill, fill to her double. She hath, I should say. Babylon will not only be judged for all she has done, but God will also give her twice, T-W-I-C-E, twice the punishment for each of her sins. And this will be fulfilled especially in how Babylon has treated God's P-E-O people. You know, uh, there's no saying, touch not my anointed. And uh, I really believe that the nation of Israel has been anointed by God (laughs) to be a special people for him. And uh, these people who have attacked, they have a lot to answer for one day. Uh, You know, we, we hate hearing about the Holocaust, right? And you see it, and it's, It shows the depravity of man, how humanity could do something like that. She hasn't seen anything yet. When she goes in this tribulation here, it's unbelievable how many is going to have to perish. I mean, it's just unbelievable. Verse 7, how much she hath glorified herself and lived deliciously, so much torment and sorrow give her. For she saith in her heart, I sit a queen and am no widow. And shall see no sorrow. She's above anything, everything else. Babylon will live decadently and luxuriously. She will flaunt, F-L-A, flaunt her importance, power, and safety. I mean, who's like her? Her arrogance has no limit. And she even defies the Antichrist to a certain point. She thinks she is a queen and invincible. Look at Babylon. Look how great she is. No other city like her. Nothing could ever happen to her. She's so far ahead of the rest of the world. So God says, let her torture and grief be in A-C-C-O-R-D accordance with the way she has glorified herself and caused others pain. The old saying, pride goeth before destruction and a haughty spirit before fall. Wherefore, let him that thinketh he standeth take heed lest he fall. (laughs) You can be full of self, but payday comes one day. Therefore shall her plagues come in one day, death and mourning and famine, and she shall be utterly burned with fire, for strong is the Lord God who judgeth her. Babylon's bragging, thinking she would stand for all time, in one day of God's judgment, burns, and C-O-L-L collapses. And as ten kings burned down the religion, Babylon, in chapter 17, Now it is the city of Babylon's turn to burn. She will be in incinerated to where she disappears from off the earth and in one day. This will be a supernatural fire from God. The Bible says, Strong is the Lord God who judgeth her. With the other judgments and now this, it is over for Babylon. Hmm? notice just where it's underlined sit in the dust O virgin daughter of Babylon more be called uh, for thou shalt no more be called the lady of kingdoms thou saidest I shall be a lady forever 
Therefore hear now this, thou art thou that art given to pleasures that dwellest carelessly, that sayest in thine heart, I am, and none else beside me. But these two things shall come to thee in a moment in one day. The lost, and then it mentions, they shall come upon thee in their perfection from the multitude of thy sorceries and for the great abundance of thine enchantments. Seems like God's got her number, doesn't he? And the kings of the earth who have committed fornication and live deliciously with her shall bewail her and lament for her when they shall see the smoke of her burning, standing afar off for fear of her torment, saying, Alas, alas, that great city Babylon, that mighty city, for in one hour is thy judgment come. The kings, the leaders of earth will wail, W-A-I-L, will wail, weep, and shake because in Babylon was their wealth, their pleasures of sin, their POS positions of authority given to them. The ten kings, remember? Many families, F-A-M, families, and even their hope of an eternal city with Antichrist. Through global communications and satellites, instant viewing, V-I-E-W-I-N-G, instant viewing. You can't do anything today without somebody with a camera, it seems like, doesn't it, almost? Okay? They will see Babylon smoldering and in ruins. Their hearts will be aghast with grief and terror at the sight. Remember, Antichrist, false prophet, demonic hordes like Lord of the Rings. How many of you remember Lord of the Rings? Remember those God creatures they were pulling out? Kings and armies have been heading toward J-E-R-U, Jerusalem and Armageddon. Their only hope will be to amass, A-M-A-S-S, -S, to amass the armies of the earth in order to stand against God. Here they are marching toward Jerusalem. They said, do you see this? And they look at their communication things and they see their city. There's no home left for them to go back to. <laughs> Antichrist is going to be madder than a hornet, isn't he? Uh, verse 11. And the merchants of the earth shall weep and mourn over her, for no man buyeth their merchandise anymore. This shows how selfish the business people are. They are not sorrowing over the loss of lives and souls, but over their financial loss. What was it there today? Facebook loss. Was it two and thirty-four billion? Uh, just in a brief one day, I think it was. Two hundred and thirty-four billion. That's just a small percentage of what they have. It's amazing. These bankers, shippers, contractors, media, industry, commerce, CEOs, magnets, financers, great men of earth know it's over and they weep. This one interest, I'm sorry, their one interest is taken away. I need to get glasses. For the love of money is the root of all evil. Their one interest. <laughs> Isn't that true? Verse 12. <clears throat> the merchandise of gold, silver, precious stones, and pearls, fine linen, purple, silk, scarlet, and all thine, uh, thine wood, and all manner of vessels of ivory, and all manner of vessels of most precious wood, and of brass, and iron, and marble, and cinnamon, and odors and ointments, frankincense, wine and oil, fine flour and wheat and beasts and sheep and horses, chariots and slaves and souls of men. Here it is stated their remarkable catalog of merchandise that they had gained, that had gained them in incomprehensible wealth. They truly will live in the lap of luxury. 
if they follow and help the beast, of course. There are 28 items mentioned here that are gone. Now think, this is the time of the tribulation with its famines, most having need of things, yet not to be found. But these men have an abundance, A-B-U-N, an abundance of everything one would need and even dream of it. But the most precious item mentioned is and slaves <clears throat> and souls of men. They are probably their forced workers and EM employees in Babylon, all under their control. You know, without God in the world, you begin to see <clears throat> the decay of humanity. And we're seeing that today in America. We're getting darker and darker here. They're becoming more and more boastful, anti-God, anti-Christ. On and on it goes in this country. And as they continue to remove God, that vacuum gets darker and darker. And we're seeing that. And sometimes I, I pull up... Uh, Christian news. Just pull that up sometime. And I look at some of the, uh, the platforms and stuff and they tell what's going on around the world. And the persecution, this isn't just here. Persecutions are worldwide. We've been fortunate here. We get upset because when I filled my tank up yesterday, it was $4.05 a gallon. Yeah. And uh, it's going, still going up, isn't it? Uh, we get upset over being uncomfortable a little bit <clears throat> when all these other things are going on around the world and people fighting for their lives, people fleeing as refugees. They've had to leave homes, everything, and take off. We've been real fortunate here. We really have. Okay. And the fruits, and the fruits that thy soul lusted after are departed from thee. Everything you tried to achieve and get, it's gone. And all things were, which were dainty and goodly and departed from thee, and thou shalt find them no more at all. The merchants of these things which were made rich by her shall stand afar off for fear of her torment, weeping and wailing, and saying, Alas, alas, that great city that was clothed in fine linen and purple and scarlet and decked with gold and precious stones and pearls. You doing okay? Am I going too fast? Babylon, their playhouse, is gone forever. They will have no more lavish luxuries. It is a total loss. The harboring, storing of the world's greatest wealth and power ever assembled in one place is no more. <clears throat> it will never, no, never, ever be seen again as long as time exists. That's amazing. These businessmen, for fear of Babylon's judgment, it is a ball of fire, happening to them will not go near Babylon. Now they are in their own desolation and have experienced etern entered they have experienced entered eternal bankruptcy. Does anybody here remember the stock market when it fell back in was it twenty nine? Yeah. Carol, were you there? You weren't. I wonder, <laughs> yeah, I do, <clears throat> if they will have read or heard what Jesus said. But God said unto him, Thou fool, this night thy soul shall be required of thee. 
Verse 17, 19. For in one hour so great riches has come to naught. Every shipmaster and all the company in ships and sailors and as many as trade by sea stood afar off and cried when they saw the smoke of her burning, saying, What city is like unto this great city? And they cast dust on their heads and cried, weeping and wailing, saying, Alas, alas, that great city wherein we were made rich, all that had ships in the sea by reason of her costliness. For in one hour she is made desolate. That even narrows it down for one day. Verse 17, their shock. With their own quakes, Q-U-A, their own quakes, now this. All sea transportation of goods, seaway. And by the way, remember the seas have been turned to blood. And they still operate. The ship's going through I, I was wondering how does that work that would be interesting wouldn't it trade halts and is gone immediately they watch Babylon burn it is over for them verse 18 their tears T-E-A-R-S as they see the smoke upon that invincible city knowing that if Babylon cannot stand no other city nor person could stand against God whom they hate. Where could they go? Huh. That's a good question. Verse 19, their despair. They express their utter hopelessness. They know they are lost and even doomed, but will not repent and believe in God. God had warned all what would happen if they took the what mark of the beast. Remember, he warned them way back. It is interesting that Babylon is not a seaport city. She is on the Euphrates River. Evidently, Babylon will light up so much from the fiery judgment of God that many of the vessels in the Persian Gulf will be able to see Babylon's destruction firsthand. They're close together, but they're separate. Rejoice over her, thou heaven, and ye holy apostles and prophets. Now, this is interesting. We have a shift. We're leaving earth, we're going to heaven. For God hath avenged you on her. People of earth <clears throat> never have the same viewpoint as God and his people. As earth mourns, heaven is praising God. God wins. Imagine the celebration. Remember they said, how long, how long? Many in heaven are ecstatic but especially the apostles and prophets. They had special ministries for God on earth and have suffered, S-U-F-F, have suffered for their faith, persecutions, but here their testimonies are vindicated. Though most were martyred, they had not wavered in preaching against Babel's idolatry system. Here is when God B-A-L balances the scales. Carol, what your dad used to say? Yeah, God doesn't balance his books every day. He said something else, too, with that. Uh, well, he said that. <laughs> You don't know how true that is. <laughs> Just remember, I was lost then, okay? To, to me belongeth vengeance and recompense, for the day of their calamity is at hand. Okay? <laughs> I remember Carol's dad came over, and my mom said, Jim, Mr. Davis is at the front door. What does he want? 
I said, I don't know yet. So I went, and he said, Jim, come with me. We went out to the car. He says, Jim, why do you want to marry my daughter? And I said, well, I love her. He looked at me, and he grabbed hold of me and started praying. <laughs> I've never forgotten that. <laughs> that was it. I was, uh, he came to love me, though. He did. Also, many of those slain were of Israel, killed by the Antichrist during the tribulation. Remember back in Revelation? We're just where it's underlined. I saw under the altar the souls of them that were slain for the word of God and for the testimony which they held. They cried with a loud voice, How long, O Lord, dost thou not judge and avenge our blood on them that dwell on the earth? They should rest yet for a little season until their fellow servants also and their brethren that should be killed as they were should be fulfilled. And in her was found the blood of prophets and of the saints and of all that were slain upon the earth. So God's fulfilling his promise. They don't have to say how long anymore. Uh, they can know that. You know, and that gives you another indication. I don't know how much God will allow people to see what's going on on earth. You ever wonder that? And, uh, but they're rejoicing in heaven because of what's happening on earth. They know something's going on, right? Verse 21. <clears throat> and a mighty angel took up a stone like a great millstone and cast it into the sea, saying, Thus with violence shall that great city Babylon be thrown down and shall be found no more at all. <clears throat> after a little time, some days or even a week, this happens after Babylon is burned. But then, even the remembrance of Babylon is finally cut off. And the angels cast a stone into the sea. And like a millstone tied around Babylon's neck, a chasm opens in the deep crust, taking Babylon under the waters of the Euphrates River into oblivion. Never to be seen again. And with voice of harpers and musicians and of pipers and trumpeters shall be heard no more at all in thee and in Babylon. And no craftsman and whatsoever craft he be shall be found any more in thee. And the sound of a millstone shall be heard no more at all in thee. And the light of thy candle shall shine no more at all in thee. And the voice of the bridegroom and of the bride shall be heard no more. Weddings, ceremonies, receptions. At all in thee, for thy merchants were the great men of the earth. For by sorceries were all nations, sorcerers were all nations deceived. Babylon the great is silenced. No entertainment is heard. All activities and riotous parties are still and silent. None <clears throat> will be seen or heard from again in this world. So don't worry about the lost people and the wicked, how they prosper. Okay? Babylon will be darkened once the pride of the nations. But here, no more social affairs. Babylon's people, millions, places are burned away and our greatness is over, past forever. The multitudes are deceived by the harlot of Babylon with her false religion in chapter 16, 17. Then sorcerers, sorceries, which have the idea of a drug, potion, or medication. The nations will be drugged into believing the lie. And then the last verse, And in her was found <clears throat> the blood of prophets and of saints and of all that were slain upon the earth. 
Babylon will be guilty of a holocaust of Jewish believers in the tribulation. But Babylon has seen the mother of persecution of God's people from Nimrod. Genesis to here in Revelation 18. In other words, throughout all the ages. Whether it's Nazism, Fascism, Humanistic, Socialism, or Communism, all have their roots, roots, in Babylon. They have been and will be responsible for human murder and warfare. And this is especially true in the killing of God's saints, culminating here in Babylon. But here she is finally caught, judged, and fallen into everlasting destruction for her crimes. She is gone. Everybody said? Remember, the remaining AR armies of the world, because of their hatred and anger toward God, are gathering together. They will catch up with the dragon, antichrist, false prophet, ten kings on the outskirts of Israel. They will enter into the valley of Jezreel, or M.E.G. Megiddo, to fight who? To fight Christ. Okay? And that's what we get into in Revelation 19. I'll be adding a couple of syllabuses that will help us to understand that better.